AI, one of the hottest topics on the planet. It's no secret that AI is shaking up many industries and will continue to do so for a while. Love it or hate it, AI is here now and will have to deal with it. Today I'll show you how I use or plan to use AI on a daily basis to optimize and speed up my game development projects. We'll have to go over a lot of stuff, so let's just skip the intro this time and jump straight into the guts of this video. This is probably one of the easiest ways to speed up your game development. Tools like Midjourney and Dali have been around for quite a while and I've been using them for years. What better way to communicate your thoughts and ideas with a single image instead of a wall of text? We probably all know these epic key art drawings from our favorite games. They are often hand drawn by a concept artist with just a description of what they should create. Being a concept artist is often a full time job. However, if you are a solo game dev or a small indie studio, you probably don't have the means to hire a concept artist. No concept artist means no way to put your thoughts into images, which for me really hampers my creativity. I can't draw for shit, but I still want to see proper visualizations of the products of my brainstorm sessions to help make things more concrete. And so I use Midjourney. It takes some getting used to and the results I get are not always as accurate as I'd like, but most of the times they are more than enough to properly convey my thoughts and ideas into images. That said, I personally wouldn't be using Midjourney to generate the key art for my game, as I don't think the tool would be able to truly capture my game's essence correctly. For that, I probably still need a human, preferably a human with concept art skills. I've heard of people asking ChatGPT, better known as Chad, to create a 10 page game concept called Cyberdam with the following requirements. First person action adventure game set in the cyberpunk future featuring a female protagonist called Ivy and a secondary NPC called A who is a rogue AI. The story is linear divided by the main quest. The game takes place in Zeist, a Dutch city that is walled off by a massive circular dam around the whole city because of the rising ocean level. Which by the way I didn't do, but I think I should have done so. This would have seriously kickstarted my game design document. I think Chad is crazily good at adding all the generic stuff that is so bothersome and boring to do all the time. Let Chad build you a tower and then take a sledgehammer and tear it all apart and fill in the detailed stuff. Personally, I much prefer it this way instead of having to build my own tower brick by brick. Since before my first entertainment game Woven, it has been one of my biggest dreams to get proper voice actors in my games. I think voice acting adds a whole new level of quality and epicness to indie game projects. So we fought hard to add them to our games. Woven and Senti of Morris were both fully voiced by professional voice actors. Meet Stuffy, a well-meaning but rather clumsy creature, all alone. Join with Glitch, a metal firefly without a past, having lost all he has ever known. Join the journey of this unlikely pair. Woven. Now for City of Springs this became a bit more difficult because it's an open world game with many quests, NPCs and dialogues. We needed a lot of voice actors and it was getting too expensive for our budget. So we experimented with various voice acting AI tools. With one of the tools we tried out, we would have been able to just hire two voice actors, one male and one female, and then let them voice everything. Then the tool would be able to change their voices to different characters. But in our tests, it ended up being shit, so we dropped that idea. My name is Dominic. How are you today? My name is Dominic. How are you today? Then we tried another AI tool called Eleven Labs, which at the time only provided text-to-speech options. It worked fine, but it lacked the options to add emotion to certain lines. In the ancient land of Eldoria, where the skies were painted with shades of mystic hues and the forests whispered secrets of old, there existed a dragon named Zephyros. While we used both of these options as placeholders for our indoor demos, we 
ended up increasing our voice acting budget, resulting in epic voice acting. That said, a few months ago, I tried out 11 Labs again for a work for hire job and noticed that they added a speech to speech option. And I think it's really good. Let me show you. This is a normal cinematic scene in City of Springs with our normal voice actors. Let me guess, you'll happily risk your neck, but need my help with something? Something illegal? Exactly. I think it's time you met my brother, Bob. And this is the same cinematic scene, but now with my voice synthesized by Eleven Labs. Let me guess, you'll happily risk your neck, but you need my help with something. Something illegal. Exactly. I think it's time for you to meet my brother, Bob. Now, my voice acting is pretty bad, but if you're on a tight budget, I think this may just be the way to go to be able to add voice acting to your game. If not, maybe for the main character, then maybe for the secondary NPCs. While I was making this video, I noticed that Eleven Labs introduced a new feature since I last used it. As if the voice acting stuff wasn't enough, Eleven Labs now also features an infinite library of sound effects. Before today, I always roamed freesound.org for free sound effects with the correct license, but most of the time they didn't really hit the mark. In my quick tests of Eleven Labs sound effects tool, I got exactly the sound effects that I was looking for with better quality and without any form of license. Now this is a true treasure trove for a solo game dev, which I am going to exploit indefinitely. My second big dream for entertainment games was the creation and usage of epic music tracks. For a woven incentive Morse, we had asked our befriended colleague and DJ Vortigon to create all the audio tracks. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you have probably heard some of his work throughout my videos. For City of Springs, I hired a musical duo who created truly epic tracks for the game. I still listen to these tracks weekly. I love them that much. Now, I have heard of the new Beatle track sung by an AI using John Lennon's voice, and it's amazing, of course. But I've tried out some tools like Beethoven AI, and I don't think there are publicly available AI tools out there to create music with. At least not one that I would feel comfortable with to put in my games. But that may also just be because I've worked with such amazing composers before. So do try out Beethoven AI and see if it works for you. My speciality, coding. You're out of a job, man. They took your job. They took your job. They took your job. They your job. Well, only if you don't roll with it. The moment I am no longer needed to code again, I'll long have switched my speciality to something else, or I will have found a way to stay essential. For now, I just use it to help out with small coding problems or ideas, because if it gets more complex, in my experience, the code won't make any sense. However, I don't doubt that in a few years it will become much more advanced, and solo game devs will get a much, much easier job. Another thing that it can help with is missing documentation. Unity is well known for its lack of proper documentation, but Chad can help fill in all the blanks. His information will not always be accurate, but missing documentation is much worse, so no harm done. Additionally, you can also use it for your own documentation. I sell a few tools on the Unity Asset Store, and they have each quite an elaborate documentation. The better the documentation and comments in my code, the less support requests I get and the better the assets are reviewed. By using chat, I transform my non-native English into understandable text and it works wonders. Now this was a new one for me and I think it's a total game changer. I can bash Unity all I want, but I think they do have a winner here. Unity Muse is a still 
somewhat hacky in editor tool with a few different looking windows but the results don't lie are you in need of a tiling pbr texture of well anything just ask unity muse texture generation and you will receive i don't know about you but it took us weeks to create nice looking materials in substance painter for city of springs <laughs> Texture generation, Pfft, it's just one thing. Even better is the animation generation. Just drop in a few descriptive lines of what you want and you can create custom generated animations for your characters. In the past, I always went to the Mixmo website to see if I could grab some generic idling character animations, but generating simple custom animations is insane. This would have saved me so much time of development for City of Springs and it will definitely allow me much more freedom in my animations for Cyberdam. Now, rest assured, it's still Unity. So Unity Muse is still very icky, hacky, in beta, and some of the generated stuff is still very, very, very bad. But some of it is instantly usable. So it's not all bad. And it's going to be very good, I think. <laughs> I would have loved an AI tool for this, but I don't. 3D modeling AI tools are still a long way from happening, I think. But if and when they do, I will jump on it. Maybe Unity Muse will expand in a few years. Who knows? Sorry to disappoint you here. But I think the true power of all these AI tools is to be creative with them. Try to find new ways to be able to speed up your work pipeline or improve the quality of something that you suck at yourself. And don't underestimate the power of chat. Let him rewrite your informative text into a pitch document specifically targeted towards a specific type of person can be the difference between landing and not landing a work for hire job. And also don't overestimate the AI tools either because they will also mess up often and big time. The letter R appears two times in the word strawberry. So now that we've gone over the ways I am currently using AI for my game dev needs, what do you think? Personally, I think there's still a long way to go before, well, the robots will take over. And there's still a lot of work to be done before I or any game dev or artist really is out of a job. For now, it seems that AI can just massively speed up production time on generic things, but the more specific or detailed you want it, the more you will run into the limits of the current technologies. I think AI is just a tool for now, a tool to be used to help me accomplish my goals, just like it can help you with yours. Back when the train was invented originally, it seriously shook the world's foundation. It was very cheap and very fast. And it opened up the whole world to people who had never even thought about leaving their village before. It was a very exciting time back then and many people were really scared it would change the world too much. For the worse. Well, I think it did make the world a better place. Just like the train, AI will change the world again. I suppose that's a given. But should we all be scared of the change or embrace it and go with it? I'll leave that up to you to figure out for yourselves. I hope you liked this video once again, and if you did, it would mean a lot to me if you'd hit that like button to help me beat YouTube's algorithm. See you again next time. <laughs>